So today we're going to be doing a lecture um, on prokaryotes. So what are prokaryotes? I think the best way to, f to figure that out um, is just looking at the tree. So the tree of life is a very basic one. Um, so we have bacteria is the most ancient, archaea, um, then we have fungi, plants, um, and animals. And obviously I, I, I skipped the, the, the details of it, uh, but pretty much these are your prokaryotes and these are your eukaryotes. So this is eukaryotes and this is your prokaryotes. So prokaryotes are bacteria and archaea together. And so one of the biggest distinguishing factors between prokaryotes and eukaryotes um, is the, the nucleus. Okay, So prokaryotes have no nucleus um, and eukaryotes have a nucleus. Right? So that's one thing that we kind of have to, to get out of the way. Um, and since we're on the topic right here, um, eukaryotes. Um, so we see that fungi is very closely related um, to us. And so we'll see that we'll bring a couple other problems in the future. And we'll see that in a little bit. Right? Um, so I guess the first thing we're going to be talking about um, is just typical bacteria. So bacteria shape. Right? That, that's a pretty important uh, thing. We're, we're going to just pretty much focus on bacteria as our um, typical prokaryote. We're not going to really look all that much into archaea because um, they're not all that important um, when we're dealing with uh, everyday life. Right? So bacteria shape. So the first one we have uh, would be round. Right? Um, so round, um, its name is cosi. Then we have a rod shaped. And that would be uh, bacilli. And then spiral shaped, and that's the spirochetes. All right. So now we're gonna look into the bacterial cell wall. Okay. So the bacteria they have cell walls. Um. So they're made out of something called peptidoglycan. Um. And it's made out of sugars. Um. And so peptidoglycan. Um. Is this area right here? So all these X's. I I consider the peptidoglycan. And so if we can think of this as the outer layer um, and this is the, the inside, so we can think of this like the cytoplasm. Right? So we have two different drawings right here. One is something called gram positive and one is gram negative. Um, and so uh, before I actually write it out, so gram positive has a very thick peptidoglycan layer and gram negative has a very thin one. So if we could draw it here, we would see that this is gram positive that thick layer of peptidoglycan, and this is gram negative. Um, so what's the relevance? Well, the relevance is this. Um, so the peptidoglycan is part of the cell wall, um, as we mentioned before. Um, so if we had some type of antibiotic, antibiotics target this bacterial cell wall. So that's very important to remember. Because um, these will probably come up in uh, passage-based questions, um, and they'll kind of just say, um, you know, if we have this antibiotic that works on a certain cell wall, it works on gram or works on the peptidoglycan layer of a cell wall, we know that it has to be a gram positive. And they'll probably give us a choice of a bunch of different types of bacteria, maybe throw in a eukaryote in there, uh, maybe an archaea, and they'll try to uh, trick us with that. And we have to remember that gram positive um, has that very thick peptidoglycan layer. Okay? Um, so gram stains. Um, positive, gram positive is purple and gram negative is pink. And this area that I didn't mention before is just the plasma membrane. So this would be a plasma membrane and this would be inner and outer. So gram negative has an inner and outer plasma membrane. And so that's why if we had some type of antibiotic um, that uh, attacked the, the peptidoglycan layer and broke it all up, it would work on gram positive, but if we try to do it on the gram negative, nothing would really happen. It would be a lot less effective because we have this outer membrane that's blocking everything. Right, so that's very important to remember um, later on in those passage-based questions. So the next thing we're gonna be looking at is uh, pretty basic, is just trophy. Um, trophy, how do, how do these things or these organisms eat? Right? Um, so they're broken up into two parts. So if we see all these, it's like chemo, autotroph, photo, autotroph. So I'll break it down in the first part and then the second part. Right? So the autotroph part, or the heterotroph, is um, how we get our carbon, so our carbon source. Um, and this chemo and this photo is how we get our energy source. Right? Um, so chemo means we get our energy from chemical means. 
Okay, so chemical energy. And um, photo means uh, we get our energy from light. So I guess the most typical example of something that's a, a photo, I guess phototroph is more specifically a photo autotroph would be plants. Plants would be a, a perfect example of photo autotroph. Um, chemo autotroph, um, what would that be? That would have get energy from chemical means, but it also have uh, produce its own car or it will acquire its own carbon um, from CO two. So um, let's see, uh, autotroph gets its carbon from CO2. Um, hetero means that it has to acquire its carbon from eating something. So it's carbon um, eating. And so what would we, this is the most important one, is if we had to identify us as something, what would we identify us as? And we would be right here. We'd be um, the, the chemo heterotroph. So that's important to remember. Um, if you don't remember all the rest, that's okay, but just remember what we are at least. Okay, so addition to that, we have these anaerobes and we have aerobes. Okay, so I think most of you guys know what this is. It has to do with oxygen. So aerobe means um, that they, they require oxygen to live. So they, they, they need this oxygen to live. Anaerobe means they, they don't want the oxygen, but there's different varieties of them um, on how much they may want it or how much they will die from it and whatnot. Um, so it's broken down into three things. So we have facultative anaerobes, we have tolerant anaerobes, and we have obligate anaerobes. Okay, so facultative um, pretty much means that um, when oxygen is present, I'll use it, um, but I don't need it. So they use oxygen when it's present, but they don't need it. Uh, tolerant means I'm not going to use it if it's there. Uh, but it's not going to hurt me. So it's just whatever. So it's just uh, neutral. Obligate though, um, if it's there, I'm going to die. So, so the, this guy's going to die. He's going to die. Um, and so if there's any oxygen, you're dead. All right? um, so the final thing we're going to look at for, for basic prokaryotes is a bacteria life cycle. So it's pretty simple. Um, but what it looks like is kind of like this. Right? And so it's broken down into four sections. So we'll have this section right here, we'll have that section, and we'll have that final section, and that one right there. So this first one right here is called something called the lag phase. Um, then we have the log phase, which is this huge exponential growth. Then we have the stationary phase, uh, which is kind of when, oh, and this is the, the, the growth, and this is over time. And so the stationary phase is just, you know, you're, you're growing, you're not really increasing in amount, um, but you're not decreasing as well. And this is the death, and this is when we're all, um, all the bacteria dies, and that's due to lack of food. So this is based on the, the amount of food resources, all right? Um, and I guess the final thing that I want to bring up, I, I mentioned it before, so fungi. So fungi are eukaryotes. Um, and that's one thing that you have to remember. You don't need to know all that much about fungi. Um, fungi, um, you can know that uh, they're broken down into um, little cells called hyphae and multiple cells are called mycelia or mycelium. Um, and they interact with each other um, and they have you know, a positive, uh, they don't have male and female, but they have a positive and negative, negative gender to them. Um, so in addition to that, um, there's not all that much that you have to know about fungi. You know, they can make spores, um, stuff like that. But the main thing that they want to get at is the fact that they're eukaryotes. So if they bring up this, um, I, I think I've seen something similar to this, or maybe just a, um, a random question that somebody brought up to me, um, is, so why is it so hard when you have um, on your toe? Mm, so that was supposed to be a toe. Uh, so if, imagine this is a foot and we have, you know, a typical foot fungus, right? Uh, all this um, foot fungus, athlete's foot. Now, why is it so hard to get rid of? Why is it so hard to get rid of this uh, athlete's foot? Um, and so this, I think I saw this maybe in some type of passage um, for the MCAT. But why is it so hard to get rid of some type of fungal disease on us? Well, the reason why is this. Remember when we had our bacteria? Um, when we have antibiotics, um, we can target that peptidoglycan wall. Um, likewise, if it's a, a gram-negative bacteria, we can target other parts of the cell wall. But now imagine this. Fungi are still eukaryotes, okay? So there is no real, true um, 
very huge amount of difference at the cellular level. You know, eukaryotes are eukaryotes. You know, they have nucleus, they have similar, um, you know, either they have cell walls like in plants or they don't, and so they have no cell walls. So it's very hard to fight against fungi for that reason. The reason is because they're eukaryotes and they're so similar to us, which is why any type of um, medicine that we may take, it may kill this fungi, but at the same time, it may kill your foot, okay? So that's a big problem. So that's a big problem in why you have these fungal diseases, why they're so hard to treat. So just keep that in mind. They may show up on um, little tidbits here and there um, in these passages of why bacteria may have certain medications that you can treat these bacterial diseases, but you know, fungi may not be able to, and that's why they're so difficult.